I created a revive system for individual players, along with a rudimentary live system, and I want to share that with you guys, and hopefully it'll help you in anything you're doing, and hopefully broaden ideas for certain game modes. To get started with the revive system, we're going to need a few things. First, we're going to want to get whatever we want to have as our object that you want players to revive at. So like, say you're doing a destiny type game mode, you want a ghost. See, I was just using the bodies as an example for the map to kind of show that Disperse is dead. But we'll use the UNSC Cortana orb. That's as close to it as we can get for now. And then we're going to want to go to gameplay now. In gameplay, we will want to get a script brain and an invisible scriptable switch. These are going to be your three core components for creating a revive. All right, now let's go into the script node and start by declaring some variables. This is going to be a lot, so don't worry if you get a little lost. But I'll go through it step by step. First, we want to go variables advanced. And we want to declare an object variable. Okay. Now this is going to be our first player reviver. So let's call it player one reviver. Right, and we want the the scope. We'll just leave them at local. That way it just affects what's in here. And then we are going to declare another object variable. And what this is going to be is player one. And now to get player one, we're going to put player one as an object. To do that, we want to go to objects. And we want to get get object at index. Plug that right into initial object. Okay, now to get this object list, what we need to do is we need to go to players, get all players on team. Plug that in right there. And then select the team you want. So I'm grabbing them all from Eagle, team one. And so once you have that, to get, whether it's player one, two, or three, or four, that is their number in the index. So number one, an index is player one. Number two would be player two. And so this is going to be the reviver for player one. We're going to set the index to one, player one on that team. Okay. Once you have these variables set up, what you want to do is we want to get an object reference for the reviver. So this is going to be the object, which will be our reviver. So let's rename it too, because we want to keep this as clean as possible. Call this one the player one reviver, and we'll call this player one ghost. Let's create an object reference for the reviver now, because we need to connect this into the initial object. All right, and after we finish these, what we want to do is we want to declare a Boolean. So what we want to do is declare a Boolean. So we go to variables advanced, declare Boolean variable, and this is going to be their lives. So let's do player one lives. Okay, and we're going to set this initial scope true, the initial value to true. And we're going to need this later. All right, and then once you are done with all of these variables, we're going to set this up real quick to delete the ghost on game start. We'll just grab delete object, and then we'll go to events, say on 
uh, gameplay start. We're going to delete the object and we'll just object reference our ghost effect. That's it. What we're going to want to do now is put another object reference. Start with that. And then we want to go to custom events and do on object interacted. And when people interact with this object, so once we have that, we want to get the delete object, connect that there. And then we want to connect an object reference for our little orb or ghost. This is, this is the identifier that someone is dead. So let's create an object reference for that now. Connect that there. All right. And then once we have that, what we next want to do is set our object variable. So we want to go to advanced variable, set object variable. After deleting, we set our object, and this is going to be player one. We want to go get another, get objects by index, uh, get objects at index. All right, uh, that to the value. And then we want to go to players. Get all players on team and plug this into the object list for our team. That index to one, whatever they are, since we're doing this for player one. And then next, what we want to do is uh, players and unblock their respawn. Because in a minute you'll see when they die, we're going to run a script that blocks their respawn. So what this does is it pulls the person at index, the, the player, and unblocks their respawn after someone activates this object. That way they come back. Now when that happens, what we want to do is we want to go to logic and we're going to want to wait for n seconds. I make this pretty quick. I'll do it at uh, 0.5. And then what we want to do is teleport that player to where they died. Uh, uh, teleport player. All right, so connect that to wait there. And then we want the player, which will connect back to our index because it's this person again. And then what we need to do to get that player's position, we need to go to objects, transform, get object position. We're going to connect that to there. What we want to do now is go to variables advanced. We want to get an object variable. get object variable. And now what we're getting here is the player reviver. So it's the player one reviver. And this is going to give us the position where we want that player to spawn at. Remember, we want everything on local. So once you have that, what this will do now is when a player interacts with this, it is going to get rid of the ghost, this object. And then it's going to unblock the respawn for player one. So that's the person at index one. And then it's going to move them to where they died, which is this object. So, which is why we didn't delete this right at activate. Because now we're going to delete it. So, we can actually just copy 
We're going to grab delete object. So as soon as they get teleported, that's when we want to get rid of it. Then we connect this object to this variable because this is our reviver variable that we created right here. And then we want to go back to players and block their respawn once again. That player is once again going to be our person at index one. Then we could just say, you died. There. That's our first part. So next we want to create the on player killed interaction. We're just going to put the ghost orb on where they died and then give an option for players to revive them. So uh, we want, so to start, we want events players on player killed. Okay. And immediately we are going to want to branch. So let's get a branch connector here. And now this is what I do. So you can have this set up for multiple people. Um, but what we want to do is we go to players and we want to get the R same player. And what we do is we connect the killed player, player A, and then we want to get our object variable for that player that we created. So advanced, want to get object variable. And that was player one. And connect that in right here. So now what's happening is we're going to check if when the player is killed, whether or not that killed player is our player one. And if they are, we'll put that as a condition here at the branch. Now, if they are, so this is player one, this is where we start getting into the good stuff. We're going to let's just duplicate the branch. So if true, we branch off. And what we want to do is we want to call upon our Boolean variable that we made earlier. So let's get uh, no, we want to set. So we're going to set our Boolean we created. So and that's if true. So because the condition we want to do is you know, we want to this is where we want to get our boolean and get the boolean plug that into the condition what our boolean is is uh player one lives local we're going to check our player one lives variable and since we set its default to true if true we're going to set our boolean player one lives we're going to set that to false now and when that happens when this boolean is at false this is where we move our objects so since this is an effect it's important to remember that you can't use move object to transform we're just going to do set object position now our object that we want to set is our reviver. Now all we need to do is just get an object reference for that. I like to just go into it. Object reference layer one reviver this is the object we're setting. We want this to move to the killed player's body. Now to get the killed player's position, all we need to do is go into objects transform and get our object position. Drag that into there, and the object that we're getting the position of will be the killed player right there. Nice and easy. Once we do that, what we want to do is block player respawns. And the player's respawn that we are blocking, one and only the killed player. And we'll give them just a message. You you died. 
And then after this blocks the player spawns, this is where we want to move our other object. So since we have the object set up to be deleted on match start, so you don't see it, we want to spawn the object. The object we are going to be spawning is this guy, our ghost. So grab it, get its object reference. Plug that in right there. Once we have this, we need to set this object's position at the body. So we need to go to objects, transform, we need to set object position. I'm gonna make this space a bit bigger real quick. Okay. Now we wanna set our player one ghost. This is our object. When I set its position at the body, we're going to do something a little specific here because sometimes the object will glitch into the ground. So like it'll be kind of in the ground and not look very good. So if you kind of want it to float above kind of like a ghost or like how I have the bodies, they stay right above the ground. They don't ever really dip into the ground. What we want to do is we need to set up some vectors. Okay, so to get the object position, what we first want to do is we want a vector three. Then we're going to want a get object position. And then we're going to want to go to math and get add vectors because we want to add some vectors to our object's position to get it more precise. So the object position that we want to get is we're going to get the object that is already there, which is going to be the switch. So our player one reviver, we're going to plug that position into operand A. And we're going to add that to our vector three it will be operand B. Now let's just say we'll put it zero coordinates. We're going to add zero and we'll, we'll make it move on the Z axis like 0.5. See how that looks. And we're going to plug the result of these into our position. And there you go. That should move our objects to the player's body when they die and specifically player one. So we got no errors. You don't see anything. Now if we kill ourselves, you'll notice we're dead, we can't respawn again, and now we got a ghost on our body. Okay, so now that we have that set up and working, I'll show you how to add a second player. So if you want to now start adding as many players as you want for this, to add a second player, what you need to do is you need to do the exact same setup for all of this, but just again. So honestly, what you could do is just copy all of it, duplicate it, move it down. Player two, if you want to be lazy. Actually, we're going to get rid of this. Don't want this. That's going to be different now because we're going to add that to this. So I'll show you how that works. First, let's change all our variables. So it's going to be for player two. But first, we want to get our player two objects. So let's get our second player reviver. And let's name them. It's our player two reviver. And we want player two ghost. Okay. You can even customize each player's one. Um, with their visual effects and whatnot. So once you got our objects for player two, and you, you will need to do this for each player. So we go into node graph and we go to our duplicated variables down here. And we're just going to change all of the player ones to two.
uh, yes, and our object variables too. And we're going to swap those out now too. So for our player one reviver, what we want to do is now grab our player two reviver. And it, to quickly do this, just select it and go to the node graph. And then on object reference, it'll be right there. And for our ghost, just going to grab our player two ghost. Create an object reference for it right here. Go into this, change this variable to player two. Okay. And now it's important to change the index now to two. So it pulls the player at index two on Eagle Team, which is player two. I got your variables set up. Let's start by editing this guy. So now we're referencing the reviver. Go back to that real quick. Layer to reviver. Lead object, yada yada. And we want to reference the ghost. So we're going to get our player to ghost right there. And then make sure our variables are correct. Layer two. And change our index here. This is important. Set that to two. And our object variable here. Change the one to two. And that's it for this part. Now, for this, what we need to do now. To add another player, we want to duplicate this and move her right above a bit. We're going to connect up here because it will become a little bit of a mess of spaghetti code. I'm not the best at organizing it, but forgive me. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do pretty much this, but for player two. So now this is where this first branch here comes into play. Right, because this is checking if it's player one. Now, if it hits false now, this is where we connect up top. So on player killed equals false. We're going to connect this false up here to this branch. Because if it's not player one, then the game's like, okay, let's check if it's player two. And then this is where we need to get our variables up to date. So we're going to connect our same player once again, because we want to check if this killed player is player two. So we're going to edit this variable to two. That way it's checking it correctly. And now that the branch is connected, we want to get our variables updated. There are two lives. Update the variables first and then change the object references. Okay, so let's, okay, we're on ghost. So, close done. Update the object reference for ghost. Gotcha. And then update the reference for the reviver. Perfect. Now that we got all this set up, now we need to just connect the player positions. So we want to get the object position for the reviver to the killed player. And then we want locked player to be killed player. And then I think that is it. Let's check and see. Yep, didn't miss anything. Okay, so that worked, and that is how you add a second player, and how you just keep adding more and more for more players. Now, the thing is about these script nodes is they have a limit. So I found I hit that limit when I tried to add a third person into a single node. So what I did to have six people in my game be able to have this revive mechanic for them, so it's six max on my map. I just created six of these, did the same thing, but I used three script brains. So once you start getting to player three and four, 
what you do is you spawn a, another script brain, and I just duplicate it, and it's going to want to duplicate these and do the same old thing that you did. Change their name. Let's say, I want this to be Player 3 Reviver. And do the same for these. And what I do also is I hid these under the map, so just in case, get it out of players' views somewhere. So we got play the reviver, yep, and then we get our ghost. Ghost. And then all we do is now we go into uh, our new script brain, and you can name these two. This will help organize it. So, do player one or two. And then, oops, do the second script brain as player three, three, four. And in here, we'll have all the junk we just made. And since we know what we did, all we have to do is go through and edit the variables. So, again, you just kind of go through these. Change two to three. That to three. Three. Make sure to update the object references. So we got player reviver three. Got that right there. Get our player three ghost. Get him cooked right there. And yeah, just so on and so forth. Go through, update the variables. And that is about it. That is how you create a revive system, similar to how Destiny works, or even like how I was using it in Left 4 Dead. <laughs> okay, so, uh, mode editor. Do, 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 uh, match, respawning, set the respawn delay to instant. All this crap. Yada, yada. All right. There are no more revives. Um, now another tricky part was if if you start the game, so like on my Left 4 Dead map, if you start the game on Cobra Team, it, it puts you on to Eagle Team, and then you're fine. But because you started the game technically on Cobra, it didn't assign you that index on Eagle. So it doesn't give you that revive. So you won't get your extra revive if you die. Instead, when you die, I, I set it up in the script to just block your respawn. So it's recommended if you're doing this, just make sure you get everybody on Eagle team when the game starts. But if they're on Cobra, it's fine. I made a separate video you can check out on how I set it up, actually exactly, I used the exact script I used on my map for this. Uh, in that script note, it's it's setting up a victory um, trigger, as well as getting all players on the same team. If you start on Cobra, that's fine. You just don't get an extra revive. So just warn people about that. But other than that, you can, I, you can still set it up fine. You can so just start it however, have people join, and so it won't break the game. That is the cleanest way I was able to set it up. It was a bit of a mess to figure out. I couldn't find anywhere else on the internet anyone setting up a system like this. I know there's the revive system for attrition, I think, elimination or something. I didn't really mess around with it too much because it looked like it was team-based. And I wanted it to be individual-based revives. So each person has their own individual revive. And it's not shared in a team pool. Other than that... That is it. If you have any questions, please leave them in, in the comments below. I will have a prefab as well linked in the description of this revive system. 
So you can just grab it and throw it in your game and mess with the code there or see how it works, see if it, if it works in your game right away and whatnot. I wish you guys the best of luck on your maps and peace.